Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to bring you guys this video. This video has been in the works since I think March or April or even February of this year because this is the Red Rabbit and also the Lewis Carroll painting and drawing process. I did a redesign of Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland. I did a book cover redesign and I filmed my process of it. This was an assignment that I did for my final painting class in art school and it was an assignment from my amazing instructor. His name is Cam Mack and he is a wonderful, wonderful painter and he gave us the assignment to do an anthropomorphic animal portrait. And anthropomorphic means when an animal has human-like qualities or appears to act like a human, behave like a human. And because I always make my artwork and my assignments geared towards literature and publishing, I asked myself what classic books, because I love classics, what books or what classic books have anthropomorphic animals in them? And many, many do, but I decided to choose The White Rabbit from Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland is one of my favorite books for the visuals and for the imaginative qualities of the storytelling and of the narrative and I had such an amazing time trying to come up with this idea. I went through a few sketches until I landed on this one and this is inspired by chapter 8 of Alice in Wonderland but also chapter 10 of the original manuscript written by Lewis Carroll. It's the chapter where Alice goes into the Red Queen's garden for the first time and sees a bunch of playing cards painting a white rosebush red. And this is because the Red Queen wants everything to be red. Her sister was the White Queen and she is no longer in power. She was overruled by her sister, her evil sister, and it is this big symbol of the Red Queen and she wants everything to be red. And I thought of this idea of, well, we have a white rabbit, what, but what if the white rabbit was painted red? Whether he painted himself red or he was painted red by the playing cards, I kind of wanted that to be up for interpretation and the way that I saw it was maybe he wanted to spy on the goings-on that are happening in the Red Queen's palace and he is one of my favorite characters and I just I love the way that Lewis Carroll describes him and the imagery that we get in the story so I had this idea of painting the white rabbit red and I also had this other idea of emulating the portrait and the pose to kind of look like the very popular portrait of Lewis Carroll, which I have drawn as an author portrait. I sell author portraits on my Etsy shop. You can see one right here. That's Alexander Pushkin, who is a very popular Russian poet. We also have, just right next to me because I moved it, it was on this shelf, we have Walt Whitman on the page of some of his poems. So I had this idea of doing a portrait of Lewis Carroll to kind of match the pose and the style that I had in mind for the Red Rabbit's pose and, um, and outfit. It's kind of the same outfit, but I tweaked it a little bit and made it more stylized to fit a rabbit's body instead of a human's body. So without further rambling on, just so you guys have a nice overview of what my inspiration was, how I got my idea, and why I did what I did, then I will bring you back to, I think, March of when I started painting this. It might even be before March. And just watch and enjoy the Red Rabbit be painted and come to life. So I thought it would be fun if I pretended I was an audiobook narrator and read to you chapter 8, The Queen's Croquet Ground, so you guys can listen to the scene that inspired this piece while I paint it. Like you can see, I did include some text boxes so you get a little brief explanation of my process. But anyway, so here is chapter 8, The Queen's Croquet Ground. A large rose tree stood near the entrance of the garden. The roses growing on it were white, but there were three gardeners at it, busily painting them red. Alice thought this was a very curious thing, and she went nearer to watch them. And just as she came up to them, she heard one of them say, Look out now, Five, don't go splashing paint over me like that. I couldn't help it, said Five, 
in a sulky tone, Seven jogged my elbow. On which, Seven looked up and said, That's right, Five. Always lay the blame on others. You'd better not talk, said Five. I heard the Queen say only yesterday, You deserve to be beheaded. What for? said the one who had spoken first. That's none of your business, too, said Seven. Yes, it is his business, said Five, and I'll tell him. It was for bringing the cook tulip roots instead of onions. Seven flung down his brush and had just begun, well, of all the unjust things, when his eyes chanced to fall upon Alice as she stood watching them, and he checked himself suddenly. The others looked round also, and all of them bowed low. Would you tell me, said Alice a little timidly, why are you painting those roses? Five and seven said nothing, but looked at two. Two began in a low voice. Why, the fact is, you see, miss, this here ought to have been a red rose tree, and we put a white one in by mistake, and if the queen was to find out, we should all have our heads cut off, you know? So you see, miss, we're doing our best, afore she comes to. At this moment, five who had been anxiously looking across the garden called out, The queen! The queen! And the three gardeners instantly threw themselves flat upon their faces. There was a sound of many footsteps, and Alice looked round, eager to see the queen. First came ten soldiers carrying clubs. These were all shaped like the three gardeners, oblong and flat, with their hands and feet at the corners, next to the ten courtiers. These were ornamented all over with diamonds and walked two and two as the soldiers did. After these came the royal children. There were ten of them, and the little deers came jumping merrily along hand in hand in couples. They were all ornamented with hearts. Next came the guests, mostly kings and queens, and among them Alice recognized the white rabbit. It was talking in a hurried, nervous manner and smiling at everything that was said and went by without noticing her. Then followed the knave of hearts, carrying the king's crown on a crimson velvet cushion, and, last of all, this grand procession, came the king and queen of hearts. like to give a very special shout out to my friend Sarah from her YouTube channel, Sarah's Perusals, who you just heard from. She very kindly read me the introduction to Anna Karenina, which is our one of our favorite books, my personal favorite book, while I painted my red rabbit. This was towards the end of the semester where I was quite busy, but it was wonderful to have her be part of it. Now we are getting to the part where I am deciding on which color to paint his jacket this was such a hard decision and I reached out to all my followers on Instagram and I finally decided on a color after much deliberation, I decided to paint his jacket blue! Yay! Oh, such a hard choice between blue and yellow, but I'm so glad I went with it. So now I am putting down my base layer and then my middle layer, which is more lights and darks, and then my top layer, which is mainly for details. I think it's so important to start with just blocking in color because I think if you get too detailed from the beginning, you can just get lost in the painting and I know that the best thing for me is to just put down color and have it down so that I don't see the color of the canvas and then just start working on top of it, building up and building the details. That's what I'm doing here, I'm working on all the details. Now I'm actually starting to add the background color. It almost matches the color of the canvas after me toning it. I wanted to keep it this nice cream color so that it really makes the red rabbit pop. Now I'm just adding some final details with my very small brush. I always start out with a bigger brush and then get smaller for details. 
Now I'm adding the background green that looks really, really almost black, but it's really dark green because I wanted your eye to go into the painting and kind of focus on his green bow tie. I just think it really adds a lot to the different color palettes that I captured in the piece. Now I am doing the final touches of the outside. I ended up doing another layer on top of this one. And now it's pretty much complete. All I had to do was add the title and the author in, I believe I used a mix of Photoshop and Procreate. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed watching me paint the red rabbit and seeing it come to life and come together and hearing a little bit from the actual book, the inspiration that I had. And I love I love finding scenes from books and really relating them and reimagining them in my artwork, so I hope you guys have enjoyed that. And after I finished the painting, it was one of the pieces that I decided to include in the pieces that I would submit to our graduating class's senior art show. And I had the incredible, incredible honor of being recognized in the art show for this piece, and it was just... Uh, I just felt so lucky and so grateful because I go to school with so many talented artists and I think they all deserve a a first place prize because all of their work, all of their hard work is incredible. So it was such an honor to be recognized and for my work to be to be recognized and the effort that I put into it. So it was amazing and um, and I'm just so grateful. So this piece holds such an incredible special place in my heart not only because I'm so happy with the results, but, and I love Alice in Wonderland and I, I love the story, but also just the time that I spent painting it and, and that it was, you know, my final piece at art school before I graduated. It was just like such a special, a, such a special process, painting process. So yes, that was amazing. Then since I took you guys all on the journey with me on my Instagram, if you don't follow me on Instagram, then definitely do if you wanna be part of my painting process because I always ask questions in terms of my artwork because you guys saw previously in the video where I was asking everyone to vote on what color I should make the rabbit's jacket. I really did not know and I was split 50-50 so I asked on my Instagram and you guys participated in the poll and if you did thank you so much i really appreciate it i did end up going with blue like you guys saw and like you obviously see now um and i'm so happy that i did now that he is finished i think that blue was just the perfect color jacket for him um anyway so yes if you want to participate on my instagram then definitely follow me i always have so much fun on there and i like making you guys a part of it and Something that I was thinking about because I felt like you guys went on this journey with me, I thought it would be really fun to sell a print of the Red Rabbit on my Etsy shop. And I was thinking, I always make my prints double-sided, and I was thinking, what should I put on the other side? And I was talking with my friend Emma, who also goes to school with me, and we were thinking about the idea. She gave me the great idea of doing a pattern because I love pattern making. And she gave me the idea of doing a an Alice in Wonderland inspired pattern. So that's what I did. And I love pattern making. I had so much fun doing it, but I didn't end up using it. But I thought I would still include it in this video just so you guys could see the process of me making the pattern. I thought it might be interesting just the different things that kind of go into my mind when I have one piece of literature and the, all the different visual ideas that I have um, in terms of what I like to create when thinking about one specific narrative and the images that come with it. So I hope you guys enjoy watching me make this Alice in Wonderland inspired pattern. So some of the motifs I used for this pattern were actually inspired by one of the first sketches I did. This was, on the left you can see, my first design idea for the cover, which I obviously didn't end up using, but I liked the different elements of the bottle and the rose, and I wanted to play around with that and maybe make it like it was the end papers of the actual book. So I started out with gray tones so that my eye understood the value scales of how I wanted to color everything. Here I'm just playing around with different design elements. I didn't end up using some of those, I ended up going with a heart, um, playing along with the Queen of Hearts, and just moving it around. I'm using Procreate for, for this, um, but you can also use Photoshop and a lot of different editing softwares. Um, I was just playing around with the different images and the different motifs that are found in the book, like the the Mad Hatter's Tea Party, and the Queen of Hearts, 
and the painted roses and the juice that makes um, the juice in the cake that makes Alice smaller and bigger and also of course the playing cards um, that were the ones that were painting the white roses red. So I'm just moving it around and then this is the final pattern that I ended up making and I really am so happy with how it came out. Alright, so I thought that that would be fun to maybe show you a little bit inside to all the different visuals that I have going on in my brain. Then I didn't end up using that pattern even though I really really love how it came out. I It didn't feel like what I wanted and I ended up doing an author portrait of Lewis Carroll which I thought on the other side of the Red Rabbit portrait would be perfect because they kind of mirror each other and they emulate each other and well Lewis Carroll through the looking glass it could be instead of Alice in Wonderland or Alice through the looking glass it could be Lewis through the looking glass um <laughs> and yeah so I it was kind of this mirror image of the Red Rabbit sort of taking over the the essence of Lewis Carroll and I thought that would be a bit more fitting especially going on the theme of my author portraits because I just ooh, one fell <laughs> I just love drawing them and I love learning about Lewis Carroll and I recently watched a documentary about him on YouTube. I'll link it down below because it's amazing because it was so interesting. It went into his life and the way that he wrote Alice in Wonderland. He wrote it for a real girl named Alice and his relationship with her and the family and he did have quite a um quite a peculiar story in terms of his relationship with children and um he's just a very interesting man and nothing is really definite about how he behaved in terms of that um but it's a really interesting story so i'll definitely link that down below and i learned so much i'm so glad i watched it before filming this video so that i have that knowledge before um sharing my own knowledge of of him and of the story and of alice i ended up doing this author portrait and i thought that i would share my process with you guys as well. My portraits, I call them on the page because I draw the authors and then I put them on the page of the books that they have written and I decided to put Lewis Carroll on the page of his original manuscript of chapter 10 which is when they paint the white roses red which is what I read before. So I just hope you guys have enjoyed and will enjoy me drawing Lewis Carroll. For Lewis Carroll's author portrait, I was using Bristol paper, which is a thicker paper. It's nice and smooth, so it's kind of like the thickness of watercolor paper, but the smoothness of regular sketching paper, even smoother than that. There's not much tooth, which is just like the texture. I wanted to show this part because it's showing how much I move the photograph and my reference around to really understand the detail and also the proportions. So I use it on my iPad so that I can really easily move it around and just see all the details that I want to include in my drawing. start out my drawings with an HB pencil. So all pencils, if you look at them, they have the grades on them. So we have H to B, H being hard, B being black. And I always start off with lightest colors to darkest colors. So here you can see I am grabbing my HB pencil and I'm going to be starting to sketch and create more of the darks. So I always start light to dark when it's a drawing. Like I said earlier with my paintings, I usually start darks to light or mid-tones to light and then add darks as well. For most of my drawings, I start with an HB and then I move to a 2B and then usually a 3B or a 4B and then I go with a very dark ebony pencil.
At this stage of the drawing, I usually have most of my value colors, my value tones down, um, and this is when I really start mark making. So you can see there's a 3B pencil right there. I'm just mixing different thin lines and thicker dark lines to really accentuate and move the eye to certain areas. The way to make certain shapes is really in the way that you make the thickness of the line, if that makes any sense. Um, when I have a light color, I usually thicken the line, so you can see the lines around his face and the bridge of his nose are darker but nice and thin. And then when we have dark colors like his right shoulder, the lines are pretty light and kind of smoky because we have the darkness already of the shaded area. So now you can see I'm just mark making. I really love making marks and having you be able to sort of see the way that I sketched it. I like feel I, I like looking at a piece of work and seeing and imagining how the artist really created the piece. That's something that I love about Monet is and Vince Van Gogh and a lot of the impressionists is I like imagining them creating the piece while they were doing it. So here we have the finished author portrait of Lewis Carroll. The way that I create my author portraits is on Photoshop, using different brush techniques and also defining patterns and just using a lot of different layers, playing with opacity, multiplying different layers. I could go on and on and on, but it's quite difficult to explain. I could spend, you know, hours trying to explain the process that I use, but I thought instead of doing that, I would talk a little bit about Lewis Carroll and the influence and the inspiration that he's had on this portrait as well as just me in general. So this page that I'm putting him on is chapter 10, as you can see from his original manuscript of Alice in Wonderland. The story of how he came to write this book is incredibly interesting because just when he was starting teaching at Oxford, he met the Dean's family, which are called the Littles, and the Dean had three daughters, and the youngest daughter, I believe, was Alice, Alice Little, and she is the real Alice behind the story. So they were on a rowboat trip, I believe, just one day, and the girls kept asking him because he was quite close with them, like, tell us a story, tell us a story, and he would always say, no, no, like, next time, next time, and they kept saying, no, this is next time, tell us a story. So then, just randomly off the top of his head, he started telling them the story of Alice in Wonderland. It was actually originally titled Alice Underground, which I think is really interesting because underground has much more of a morose, solemn sound to it. It sounds a bit scarier, and um, Wonderland has much more wonder, obviously, and, and whimsy to it, so I found that really interesting to find out. And also, just the way that he came up with this story off the top of his head, I think that that kind of explains the, the nonsense of it, because it's like, you're not really planning out a story, you're just letting the imagination kind of form it on its own, and I just think that that's amazing. So he wrote this story with these three little girls in mind, and... And another thing that I love, and a lot of writers do this actually, which I'm so surprised at, is a lot of them would draw and illustrate on the pages of their manuscripts, like Leo Tolstoy and Alexander Pushkin and um, Fyodor Dostoevsky. Those are three Russians that would do it, and it's incredible because Lewis Carroll actually did the illustrations in his manuscript, and he wrote out the titles, and he gifted it to the girls um, and bound it and wrote it all himself and I love thinking about he had these images in, in his head and he wrote the story and then he decided to draw them himself. I think it gives you even a better insight into the way that his mind worked and showing you how he imagined the playing cards. The illustrations that come in Alice in Wonderland are usually um, by other illustrators and so I think seeing Lewis Carroll's own illustrations in his books is just magical. I feel so lucky as a reader to be able to see the world of Wonderland in the eyes of Lewis Carroll through his illustrations and it gives us just a new, a new visual. I mean, 
this this world why I love it as an illustrator is because it is so full of whimsy and imagination and there's so much there that you can do and you can see and it's just amazing and and wonderful so here we are finished these are the front and back of the author portraits and book cover that i will be having on my etsy shop so if you want your own red rabbit and lewis carroll on the page portrait those will be available on my etsy shop which is of course is linked down below as well as my website my portfolio and i'll definitely make sure to include all the supplies i used in the description box in case you're also artists and you're curious i can't thank you enough for coming on this journey with me and i really hope you have enjoyed okay and that is it thank you so much for watching this video i am so excited and so honored that i get to share my painting and drawing process with you guys because it's a very solitary thing to create art i feel like it's so exciting to be able to share it with other people and especially people that are interested in art and books and have some kind of connection just like i do lewis carroll and the red rabbit will be on my etsy shop i'm supposed to be getting the prints today actually but anyway like you saw it will have the Red Rabbit will be the finished cover design and Lewis Carroll will be the finished on the page portrait um, and it will be front and back like I said so that should be on my Etsy shop pretty soon so definitely keep an eye out for that. I always post on my Instagram and my YouTube whenever I have another Etsy restock so I'm so excited for you guys to have your own Red Rabbit portraits. If you guys want one then you can get one. I'm so excited uh, and I just love seeing all of you sharing your pictures with me of when you buy an author portrait or when you buy any of my artwork on my Etsy shop. It just really means the world and you make my dreams come true. And it's just amazing to think that other people have my artwork in their homes and with them and it just makes my heart so happy. So anyway, like I said a million times, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and I will see you soon in another one. Definitely let me know if you want to see more painting process videos because I... I'm planning quite a few of them, so I hope that you guys are ready for that and excited. All right, I hope you're having a great day, and I will see you soon in another video. Happy reading and happy painting.